So the question that we ask in this paper is, what exactly is a scenario? And what are the qualities that it shares with other techniques for planning for the future, other tools and other approaches? We started off uh, by looking at the history of this problem of defining scenario. And it goes back to 1968. And, it's a, and Simon Brown wrote that it is often with great conviction that the champions of various definitions try to convince others that their particular de notion uh, is the correct one and that other animals that may be presented to them bearing the label scenario are really something else in disguise. Possibly contexts, situations, plans, assumptions, parameter values, but certainly nothing that you ought to be calling a scenario. So we have this, uh, say, internal notion of that we think we would know a scenario if we would see one, right? But how do we define what that is? In the contemporary literature, we often find scenario coupled with a compound, as a compound modifier together with based. So we've got scenario-based planning, right? We've also got scenario-based discussions, deliberations, and conversations. If we're trying to understand how do scenarios, when they're present, then uh, impact our interpersonal exchanges. We've also got scenario-based thinking, learning, and discovery. So how is it that scenarios uh, impact our, our cognitive faculties? We've got scenario-based exercises, modeling, and risk analysis. So how do scenarios then affect the other tools that are present and their implementation when scenarios are around? And of course, we've uh, these all kind of come together in this world of of scenario-based planning uh, inside this uh, tradition of intuitive logics again. So um, we also find a number of quizzical definitions uh, that's kind of fortunate because they provide us some notions of what scenarios are, but they're unfortunate because they may not be um, precise or they may even be a bit distracting. For example, we've got uh, definitions uh, of images of the future. So scenarios are maps of the future landscape. Scenarios are artificial, artificial case histories, future histories, past futures. And this goes on. We've got scenarios are leaps or jumps into the future. Scenarios discipline imagination. Scenarios are mental time travel, memories of the future. They're awkward forms of evidence. And again, the dominant tradition in scenario planning um, in futures and foresight studies is this intuitive logics tradition. Tracing scenario planning back to its origins, we end up with a gentleman named Herman Kahn, who during the Cold War wrote a set of scenarios about how the United States could essentially fight, win, or lose a nuclear exchange with Russia. So his lectures uh, that he delivered were translated into a book uh, called On Th Thermonuclear War in 1960. By 1967, further developing the notion of the use of the scenario inside of military planning and military strategizing, together with a colleague, Anthony Weiner, he came up with probably the most cited definition that we have today uh, for scenario. And it, and it is as such. So scenarios are hypothetical sequences of events built with the intent of attracting attention to causal processes and points of decision. Um, so on thermonuclear war, so in Hermann Kahn, right, this is very much a nod back to Karl von Clausewitz, who in, uh, well, he wrote this uh, book on war in the early 1800s. It was published after his death in 1832 by his wife. But Karl von Clausewitz uh, was a Prussian military scholar who, uh, who wrote uh, probably one of the most prominent books on military strategy uh, for, at the time. And von Clausewitz um, was very much interested in the notion of the theater of war. Now, the theater of war is now a metaphor that has carried through uh, time, and we still uh, use it today. But take a passage from his book. He, said, he wrote that even the bravest uh, is at least to some degree confused. Now a step further into the battle, which is raging before us like a scene in a theater, we get to the nearest general of division. Here, cannonball follows cannonball, and the noise of our own guns increases, increases the confusion. Tracing scenarios even a bit further back, we end up with the Latin word scenae or skene. 
And Dressler wrote that uh, the use of scenarios was expanded in the Italian theater uh, Commedia dell'arte to include not only what is presented to the audience, including the plot, scenery, and the dramatist personae and their props, but also the behind the scene instructions on technical devices and scene transitions to make the theatrical performance flow. And so scenarios then are this structured guide for the actors and the stagehands and the director to be able to put this presentation forward, right? So we're getting a little bit of uh, a closer idea if we're going back to the etymology. Um, but we're still left with this contemporary problem of this confusion over our definition of scenarios. So what did we do in this paper? The first thing we did, we, we assembled a digital library of the scholarly reports, books, and peer-reviewed article journals, uh, primarily in this intuitive logics tradition dating back to 1967. And then we searched that library for the phrases a scenario is and scenarios are. So uh, uh, with the understanding that academics that write a scenario is will be very careful with, with, with what they write after that, especially in this tradition because we scenarios are very much in focus of what we think about uh, quite a bit. And again, same with scenarios are. So if you're going to write the word scenarios are, whatever follows is what we're looking for. And we were able to extract uh, 405 references or instances of this. And we took those and we narrowed them down to uh, 85 definitions that we considered to be uh, uh, under certain criteria better than other definitions. We made an assessment of the frequency of the vocabulary then of those definitions. Um, and we organized them into a hierarchical chart um, in, in the categories. And by asking a number of questions, we're trying to get at the notion again of what a scenario is, right? So if a described phenomena is future-oriented, right? That's our first cue that we're talking about uh, a scenario. But if it's not so, we're talking about other things. So we're talking about the counterfactual. So imagine you, the counterfactual has you think about a, a time period in the past, change some events, right? And see if the present then still holds the same uh, if, if the past hadn't been changed. So imagine going back in time and imagine that somebody was never born, right? World, would the world still look the same, right? Um, the now cast is something similar. It's a hypothetical thought experiment but they're not asking you to project yourself back into the past. Um, they keep you in the present. So imagine you, uh, the observer of this video, you're riding a bicycle in the rain, uphill, right? As, uh, as people, we can do this rather easily. We can displace ourselves in space, right? So um, that's the, the notion of the null cast. In the counterfactual, right, these are not future-oriented. And we get to our second rung. So is the described phenomenon future-oriented? And is it about the external context? So scenarios in this tradition have this notion that they're out of our control. Um, that there's something that we're going to have to react to. If they're not about the external context in organizational strategy, we're talking about other thought experiments, such as the prefactual. So if we are to build and invest in investment A, how would our future look? If we were to invest in future into investment B, how would our future look if we do that in, say, 10 years from now? So the prefactual. And very close to option evaluation, so management dilemmas, leadership visions, the notion that you know, the future is out there, right? And we just have to move the organization towards that future, right? So we can control and enact this future. The third question that we have is, is it a narrative description? So a narrative, is it, is it a story? And if it's not a story, we're talking about the extrapolation of data points into the future. So what might oil prices be at the end of the year? So a forecast, right? We're simulating models. The outputs of these tools are not necessarily stories. They might be inputs or part of stories, right? Um, the sensitivity to analysis. Uh, price of oil, $100 a barrel, plus or minus 50%, right? That gives us our, our sensitivity analysis, but it's not really a story. It's not a lot we can, uh, we can plan from it for sure. Is the scenario future-oriented? Is it about the external context? Is it a narrative description? Is it plausibly possible? Right, for organizations, it may make a, a lot of sense to plan for the future, but not if it's not plausible, 
right? So science fiction, future fantasies, dystopias, utopias, right? Do we want to spend time thinking through how do we cope with the next alien invasion, right? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So uh, again, this uh, in tradition of strategic management is very much focused on, on a, a pragmatic way of, of planning for the future. The next question we have is uh, assist inside of a systemized set. This is essentially asking, is there more than one scenario, right? So um, the scenario uh, is often considered a baseline scenario, right? A prediction, a what if, a contingency plan, right? These are all more or less similar uh, or singular futures, right? Where we have them and we create them for, and we use them for analysis, but we're not using a set of scenarios, right? To plan for the future. Um, and finally, are they comparatively different? So the scenarios effectively have to be different from one another if they're going to help us to plan uh, more holistically to, uh, to uh, across a range of futures um, that are very different from one another to help us then broaden our scope of our planning. So how are they then comparatively different? There are other techniques for building scenarios uh, somewhat shared uh, and overlapping with the intuitive logics tradition. Um, for example, they're using cluster or island heat maps uh, built by morphological boxes. Uh, to, but if you're using scenarios that are occupying the same space, they're not different enough um, to really uh, justify using your time to plan with these. So if we're able to get all the way down through that flow chart to the end of the scenario, that is more or less what the scholars inside Foresight and Future Studies would consider to qualify as a scenario. If you're interested in reading more about scenario planning, we've got a number of, uh, of other uh, publications that I've written together with uh, Professor Rowland. Thank you very much for your time and, and listening, and have a great day.